بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Now the next thing we'll try to understand the different challenges you will be facing if you are using autonomous AP architecture. So before we move on to the lightweight, we need to understand the different uh, limitations or the challenges we face. Now one of the uh, major issue is we have to manage each and every access point individually. So which means let's say in my network we do have maybe one or two access points. you are going to manage them individually that's something that's something you can do but what if i have hundreds of access points or or just take 10 to 15 access points then then the problem comes because you have to go to each and every access point and you have to configure the ssid you have to configure the security parameters you have to configure the pre shared keys to use for authentication what will be the radio frequency channels to be used so you need to configure all these parameters on each and every access point which is something not efficient so that is one of the main reason we don't really prefer to use this architecture uh, this autonomous ap model now one more issue is let's say we configure the societies let's say we configure the society let's say for vlan 10 and we have configured the society for vlan 20 30 and they are being mapped with a vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 on my wide network so everything is working fine but now the question is what if i need to add a new vlan so we need to go to switches add the new vlan and then we need to uh, assign the ports so of course this is on the wide network and on the wireless as well we need to add a new ssid let's say uh, ssid whatever 40 number and this has to be configured on each and every access point again and also we need to configure the trunk links to carry that new vlan as well so this is going to be very difficult the now the same thing applies what if you want to remove any specific vlans or modify any specific uh, information so this is one of the issue so mapping is one problem you need to map the specific ssids with the with the vlans and if you misconfigure the mappings also there is a problem and what if you have, you need to add a new ssid or the new vlan then then again you need to uh, go to each and every access point and do that so that is one of the limitation we can say with this one now the other options are like upgrading the firmware as each and every access point are managed individually so if you want to upgrade the firmware firmware is like just like improvements you can say enhancements or the improvements in the next version which was introduced by any hardware let's say like upgrading your operating system or updating your uh, your firmware that's what we can say now if if this has to be done this has to be done individually separate because there is no centralized way to do so you need to log into each and every each and every access point and we have to do it individually so that is again one more limitation or one more challenge you will face now same thing authentication information so we need to make sure that all the access points have the same ssid that is one more thing you need to know because you cannot say that access id is has to be configured on each and every uh, so ssid is has to be configured on each and every access point but we need to make sure that they match the same ssid if there is a mismatch of ssid also that's not going to work now apart from that you also need to ensure that you are going to configure the authentication credentials and these credentials must match on each and every device so if there is any mismatch of these credentials also the you may not have uh, proper connectivity to the wireless users now additionally the most of the one of the major challenge as i said just now is like misconfiguration because we we are going to configure every access point separately so there is a possibility of misconfiguration of ssids maybe uh, typing errors or maybe let's say the ssid is vlan 10 maybe here by mistake i have added vlan 100 let's say so there is a possibility or maybe there are some security key misconfigurations or sometimes vlan to ssid mappings you do that may be wrong so these are the problems so there may be a mismatch of the configurations or misconfiguration so both are like wrong configurations and also there is a possibility that also there there is something called frequent uh, frequently non configurations 
Now this comes when you add a new access point. Let's say in my network, I'm adding a new access point. Now I have configured everything here and my users, the wireless users are connecting to this access point, that is fine. But as this is a new access point, if this new access point is not properly linked or connected to the network, like the trunk link or, or SSID to VLAN mapping, if this is not properly done, so all your wireless user traffic will come and drop here because it will not go beyond this point because of the mis because of the um, configurations which are not uh, properly mapped or properly configured. So this is again one more one more problem with the autonomous uh, AP architecture. Now one more uh, challenge is like management is going to be very difficult because we are managing each and every access point individually. This can lead to some of the vulnerability, uh, security vulnerability issues. Like a couple of examples, let's say, if I, if I go with, uh, it may lead to something like each and every access point is going to handle the security policies separately. So whatever the security policies or security parameters, and this is not centralized. So which means there is a possibility of uh, misconfigurations and again, it's it's again uh, the one more issue is any rogue access point can also get added into the network on its own. Uh, that that can also one of the issue. So that's something we need to uh, find out. So any there is a possibility of, of a rogue access point being added or security parameters are not properly configured. That that can be a problem again. Now one more issue is like the radio frequency uh, RF signals, RF management, because each and every access point has to be, uh, we need to set up each and every access point with a specific radio frequency parameters that has to be used for each access point, again, based on the models. Like we need to decide whether we are going using 8.11a standard or 8.11b or n, what is the actual standard uh, we'll be using uh, again, uh, what is the signal quality? We need to also uh, define that or transmitting power because depending upon your coverage area, you need to decide the transmitting power of each wireless device and also number of clients you are going to connect. So these are all kind of uh, radio frequency parameters you have to define on each and every access point. As we are doing individually, so there is no centralized option, it's going to be very difficult. Now one more issue again as uh, monitoring because intrusion prevention system, like there is something called IPS devices or intrusion prevention system. Now this is typically to monitor the traffic for any kind of vulnerabilities. As the, all the access points are managed individually, so most of the traffic, let's say if it is going within the access point, they, it goes directly. And there is no centralized uh, traffic flow. So as there is no centralized traffic flow, because the traffic may go from here this way, depending upon the VLANs. But whereas in case of centralized, we use WLC, the traffic will go through the WLC. So as there is no centralized traffic flow, it's very difficult to monitor the traffic like intrusion prevention system, or if you want to apply some quality of service for a specific traffic, like giving priority for specific traffic like VYP, or reserving some kind of bandwidth, uh, these options are not uh, possible yet. So it's very difficult, we can say. So like bandwidth policing, restricting the bandwidth for specific uh, traffic. So these are something, this is going to be very difficult in general. So to overcome all these things, you always want some kind of centralized management and that is where we'll be using centralized uh, architecture or lightweight access point architecture, which is the next one we'll be discussing. So most of the typical production networks will be using centralized uh, WLCs, which will be used to manage all the access points from a single centralized location. 